Power plus dead time model is a standard model that approximates many dynamic systems. It includes three parameters. One is a time constant, the other is a gain, and the other one's a dead time, or these three that are listed here. We're going to review in this video how to obtain a graphical, uh, use a graphical approach to obtain these three parameters that you can see here in the in the plot and uh, we're going to do that with the temperature control lab the very first thing that we need to do though is go ahead and collect some temperature control lab data visit this uh, page right here it'll show you the code to be able to generate the uh, the temperature uh, response of turning the heater up to 70 percent so just copying that in and then running it you'll be able to get um, a plot of the uh, step response of this Arduino device. So you can just take this and run it and I'll just go ahead and start this. We'll get a slightly different response than when I ran it before. Starts out about 19.58, 19 or 20 and uh, the heaters turned on to 70 percent. So I'll let that run and then let's go over the methods for obtaining this um, obtaining this model there's some background information here there are links here on this page on how to obtain a first order plus dead time model uh, here's our equation right here uh, where we have temperature we're trying to get a temperature response to uh, changing this to 70 percent okay we need these three parameters now um, after we we run it, okay, um, we're going to get a plot that looks a bit uh, like this. So let's just go through the procedure on how to do it. You should have had some background on this already, but um, let's go ahead and start by just marking on our plot some of the values here. Okay, so here we go. We have our first one, and this is delta y. And that's about equal to 72 minus, uh, I'd say it's about 23. Okay, so that's going to be about 49 degrees uh, Celsius. And then our delta U is going to be 70. And that's a percent of the way there. So the very first thing that we can do is get our gain value. So that's going to be Kp is going to be delta delta y divided by delta u. And so that's going to be 49 uh, and don't forget the units degree Celsius divided by 70 percent. Alright and let's just see if I can uh, get approximate numeric value there. All right, so equals 49 divided by 70. Okay, I think I need to do the equal sign on the other side to make this uh, work. All right, let's try this. Equals, and then it says 0 0.7. All right, so 0 0.7 is our gain, and that's going to be degrees Celsius per percent on the heater. So there's our very first parameter that uh, we got. And then we can use some of the, go after some of the other parameters. The next one that's probably easiest to obtain is the dead time. And so if it's a, uh, a second order system like you see here, here is the start of the input response. And then if we take um, this and draw, you know, for a second order system, take the inflection point um, and then draw the tangent to that and where it intersects this line coming through uh, we'll say that this period right here is our dead time okay so we're just approximate with a first order approximation of a second order system with a little bit of dead time and so our theta p is going to be about it looks like about a quarter of a minute um, so I'll just say that's about equal to 15 seconds. All right, and then the next thing that we need is we need to take delta y 
All right, and then multiply it by amount of time uh, for one time constant to get 63% of the way there. Uh, so let's just see what that is. Okay, I'm going to try this again. And we'll do 49 times 0 0.632 equals, and that's going to be 31. So we need a change of 31. We started at 23 plus 31. We need to see when it gets to 54 degrees Celsius. And that's going to be the one time constant. So if I come here to 54, which is right here, and then draw my line down. All right. And this amount of time between uh, after the dead time all the way up to when it gets to 63% of the way there, this time right here, that's my time constant. All right, so that's going to be about uh, three point, let's see, three minutes or so. I'm going to put it back into seconds. So that would be about 100 and, let's see, 120 would be two minutes. So it looks like about 100 and, mm, 140 or so seconds. Okay, so tau P equals 140 seconds. So there I have it, my uh, KP, my tau P, and my theta P. So those are my parameters um, that I came up with uh, based on the graphical fit method. And that was it for this one. The next thing that we're going to do is use regression to get these as well. Now let me just review that uh, briefly. So if we don't have a step input, Let's say we you know, had something like this or a doublet test, which is up, down, and back to the nominal value. That would be called a doublet test. Um, you know, some of this, uh, the graphical fitting method doesn't work as well. It doesn't work, in fact. Um, and so we have to use optimization to minimize some of the squared errors between our first order plus dead time model and the data. Um, so that's going to be the subject of the next one, where we use regression to be able to fit uh, these models instead. Okay, and let's see how close we are uh, to finishing here. It looks like it's, it's trending up. It's almost done uh, collecting that data. Um, and uh, then when it does, we'll just see how different it is than when we collected it uh, before. And this is actually, I guess, seven and a half minutes. So uh, it might be a little bit long. Let me go ahead and pause it, and then I'll unpause it again when it's ready. All right, just finished. Uh, here is the result of this. Um, so very similar response. Maybe started just a little bit lower, but you know, still about 71 degrees uh, of where it finished. And so you could do the same thing with your own data that you generate. Uh, you don't have to rely on the data that I provided. Okay, so we'll do regression as a next one.